Hello, Roman. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Thank you so much for um, agreeing interview. My pleasure. Um, Roman, uh, you are an expert in, in the field of AI, um, to be precise, uh, in making AI safe. I'm trying. <laughs> and you are uh, an author of several books uh, dedicated to this topic, right? Uh, yeah, there is the latest. Oh, how nice. Thank you so much. We will leave uh, links in the description uh, to purchase this book. Um, I am a graduate student of uh, Florida Atlantic University uh, in the field of uh, computer science. So I am a little bit um, familiar with uh, researches in AI field are going on right now. But, um, you know, these bits of pieces of information comparing to your knowledge um, um, make me feel that AI will never be a separate entity uh, which can um, identify itself, which can have its own will, its own um, thoughts about uh, its purpose. So, in my opinion, uh, they are still uh, a number of sophisticated um, statistically analyzing scripts which perform uh, some uh, decisions on the information they've seen before. So, am I right or not? So, it's an open problem. People disagree. You have an opinion based on what you experienced, what you studied. I have a different opinion in this case. Uh, only future will tell us who's right. It seems to me, at least from recent progress, that we are getting much better at emulating a lot of capabilities of a human brain. Artificial neural networks are simplified, but they are simulations of what uh, natural neural networks are supposed to do. So if we continue at the same pace, you project those trends forward, both in terms of available computation, data sets, it seems like we, we might get to human level performance. Now again, people disagree on how soon it will happen. A lot of different curves converge around 2045. Some uh, people with insider knowledge recently have made very, very strong statements, seven years, five years, I don't know what they're thinking or if they know something I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised if in 20 years or so we had human level performance. Hmm. How interesting. Uh, Roman, can you please tell me, uh, what do you think about, um, is it possible to create an algorithm which will decide if a research in the topic of AI is um, safe or it's going to lead to some consequences, unpredictable consequences, or there is no possibility to uh, um, foresee the future of development? Well, AI is a dual-use technology, so the same exact program can be used to do something very good, useful scientific research, for example, or someone can use it to discover new biological weapons. It is the same intelligence, same capability. At the end of the day, if a system is not an independent agent, it's not super intelligence separate from humanity, it does what people want. And we published a number of papers on malevolent AI where hackers, crazy people, military, can utilize this technology for harm. If it's an independent agent, then the question is how well it is aligned with uh, what people want, interests of humanity. And of course, again, it could be equally capable, but decide that we are not very important for whatever it's doing. <laughs> uh, do you believe that we should create some uh, additional agreements, additional maybe uh, even laws uh, to protect humanity from uh, this kind of researches, or we can apply existing laws, maybe from the weaponry domain or something like this, to protect uh, the people. So there is a lot of interest in governance of AI and ethics of AI, and I participate in a lot of those efforts, but I'm not sure I'm very optimistic about how successful uh, making something illegal in this domain can be. If you think about previous examples, uh, spam is illegal, computer viruses are basically illegal, but it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. You can look outside of computer science, whatever, it's drugs, prostitution, murder, we don't have any shortage of that as well. So while it makes you feel good, then you say, no, it's illegal to do dangerous intelligence research. 
if you can do it on your laptop somewhere outside of the US, doesn't impact anything. True, true. Um, Roman, in one of your interviews, you mentioned that uh, it is generally possible to create an AI uh, which can be able to run a company. So, uh, do you think that uh, this can be extended to a government level so that AI could uh, at least help to run uh, some of the uh, governmental departments at least? And uh, what kind of government it would uh, look like? Maybe some kind of uh, uh, Project Venus, uh, like research-based economy or something else? So it depends on how much respect you have for human government. Some people may argue it would be better not to have one to begin with, so it's easy to automate uh, just replacing them all together. Uh, for the system to be a good governor, it has to understand what people want. So that's again the value alignment problem, getting AI to completely understand human model, group dynamics, uh, public policy, uh, it seems like it should be possible to the same level current political leaders do it, whatever they are crazy dictators or incompetent bureaucrats, it's not a high standard. Uh, running a company is all about making money, so there is a single, single thing you can kind of look at the progress and go, okay, I'm making more money, so I'm doing better. With politics, with democracy, you always kind of 50-50. Half the people hate you, half the people love you. So if you make random binary decisions, you're going to do as well as, as most politicians. So I'm not sure it's a hard standard. Now, doing better than human representatives, now that's a challenge. And we are not sure what, what better means. Is uh, humanity still in control? Or is AI now making decisions for us and says, okay, you guys don't like it, but donuts are bad for you. Donuts are illegal, everyone gets a carrot. Is that an improvement? A healthier society, people live longer, but not sure that's what we want. Hmm. Um, Roman, um, I'm building a company which is uh, producing drones and uh, software for drones. And uh, my company will rely a lot on AI to make them safe, to make them safe for public, for property, for not to destroy anything. Uh, do you think uh, there is a way to make a balanced uh, technology with uh, today's um, achievements, today's capabilities of processor power, of uh, uh, some AI models, to make uh, this kind of entertaining stuff, uh, robotic stuff, safe enough for public? So you, you said the word enough. That's the, I think, important keyword. We can make things which are safe to the level we are comfortable with. It's a lot harder to make something almost always safe. So even with airline industry, we see, you know, okay, it's going well for a few months, then a plane crashes, uh, same thing. The hardest part is to make it 100% safe. And that's important for human level performance and beyond. We can afford to have a drone lose a package, hit someone, it's unpleasant, but uh, the world goes on. Now, if you have a system with power to impact everyone, that's a different story. So we can easily make uh, useful systems with some effort, computational, financial, we can make safe enough systems, drones. But can we make perfectly safe and secure, very powerful systems? That's not obvious, and that's the important question, and that's uh, so far not looking very optimistic. We never succeeded at making 100% secure anything. Hmm. Roman, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a real pleasure to have a conversation with you. Pleasure was all mine. Thank you so much.